Hey, what's up, guys? How's it going? So, yeah, uh, you know, as you guys probably all know, Guild Fest is going on. And this is by far my favorite quest to do of all the quests you can possibly do. This is the quest I love to do. It's a three day long quest. All you gotta do is 90 monsters, which, you know, fortunately, Code 66 makes this incredibly easy. And it's 120 points. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm loving that right now. You know, so we're sitting here doing our quests and everything. Um, you know, just as per usual, right? And I, you know, you made my task. What is the point of this video today? Well, pretty simple. Uh, as you guys can probably tell, I've basically gone all barracks. Yeah, well, the, the, the particular mindset that I have right now is that I'm going to be training tier ones. And I don't have any intention to spend the gems, nor do I have any intention to spend the spades. Because as of right now, I'm kind of in that phase where I am building up speeds and I am saving up gems. And then a lot of the time, if I am going to use them, it's probably to research. And in case you're wondering what research exactly, uh, yeah, pretty simple, actually. <laughs> I'm just going down the familiar route. So as you guys can tell, I've already gotten through all of those up at the top. And I'm just now working on getting that to 10, then this to 10. And then I'll work my way down and go down these, get these to 10, and eventually we will get to pack four. Um, now, of course, you know, the, the, the mindset that I have for that is, is that by getting there, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, like speeding up merges, for example, you need to save those. I mean, frankly, they're all better than people realize. Um, you know, because for, for one thing, right, you can only use those on the merging speeds and you can't use your normal speeds on like the actual packs themselves. So if you want my advice, start saving those uh, because frankly, you're going to want to, you know, you're going to want to have a couple of them. So that that way, when uh, when the time comes, you can actually use them. Uh, another thing you probably ought to start doing if you haven't already is you might want to start saving your fragments. Now, fragments, as much as they may seem that not that big of a deal, there are quests related to fragments. So make sure you save your fragments. It's about four hundred fragments in most cases for the quests, um, and there are about a hundred. And 30 some points it's you know kind of differentiates depending on uh what the current quest is but just you know a word of advice make sure you do that um now of course uh you know again i'm not really killing it in coliseum obviously i'm hanging around at around 50 right now you know and that that's okay i mean i'm not in any rush um and of course you know when it, when it comes to uh you know topics right there are three things that I want to get off my chest that I, I thought, you know, would be kind of worth talking about, which is basically rally leads and the different kind of rally leads there are out there. Um, you know, for what it's worth, you know, I feel like uh, up to this point, there are about three different ways I know you can play as a rally lead in any guild, regardless of whether it's high might, low might, whatever. Um, you know, you've got the rally leads that literally have nothing. Like, to the point where they maybe only have, like, a thousand, two thousand, maybe three thousand troops. And they're leading marches. And, and you know, I mean, that you really wouldn't think that's possible. But you can really manage if your enemies are only sending, you know, like... Especially if you're, if you're dealing with people that are offline. You know, if you get a million or two million plus troops... Even though you're not sending very many yourself, it doesn't mean that the rallies failed. You still got 2 million troops, and as long as you've got your leader, there's really nothing wrong with it. And that's one playstyle that I'm seeing a lot of uh, lower tier people on a budget kind of play. Um, you know, and obviously, you know, the people that have got like sets like these where they're not, they're not, they're not champ sets, okay? But they're, they're okay just enough that you can kind of play with them, right? <laughs> You know, that's one play style that I'm starting to notice with rally leads. Um, obviously, you have the mid-tier rally lead, right? Which is somebody that's, you know, he's got some troops, but, you know, he's got enough that he can still hide them away just like a normal guy can. But what makes him different from the lower guy and the high-tier guy is that, you know, a guy like this might have, you know, instead of, let's say, uh, you know, instead of having, like, maybe... 
one set for everything, this guy is going to have a mid tier set, meaning that you know maybe he's got a set for range, he's got a set for infantry, he's got a set for you know cavalry, but his sets are all anywhere between green to purple. You know he's not he's not overkill in other words. You know and he's a lot of the guys that I see that play like that, by the way, are usually people that are going to be trying to go for forts. They're, you know, the play style is pretty straightforward. It's not like, again, they're not like your uh, your high tier guy. A lot of the time, they'll, you know, they'll come up by the fort. They'll rally on a fort if they think they can counter it. But for the most part, and this is the, I think, the most interesting aspect to their play style is that, you know, if they're holding a fort or something like that, they're, you know, they're going to be able to switch out the type of gear that they are wearing. And they're going to give that guy, you know, a bit of a, a runaround, you know. So if he wears range, yeah, and the rally's going to start in probably infantry. So the guy waits until he's set, and then he asks for a re, you know, change in his composition. Go to cavalry, changes the cavalry gear, and immediately tries to eat the marches that come on the fort. Assuming that obviously said rally leader doesn't have any clue what's going on, which very rarely happens, but you'd be surprised. I've seen some last-minute changes that actually were quite fatal. Um, now, of course, uh, you know where does that come in line with the high-tier player? You know, obviously, high-tier players are players that are probably packing in some pretty decent champion gear. You know, they're they're people that, frankly, you, you, the the moment you meet them, you know they're probably going to be tough because uh, when you look at like a you know one of their station marches, for example. Each and every hero they have is all gold. They're all army attack heroes. You know, odds are they probably got, you know, maybe not one, maybe two 11k heroes. They got a full gold champ set with maximum stats and everything. And a lot of the time, the players that I see that are playing around with gear stats that are that incredibly OP, oftentimes their playstyle is completely different from some guy that's even in the mid tier or low tier. Where the mid tier and the low tier guy does doesn't really have anything to lose the guy that is at the high tier has everything to lose um and why do i say that it's that you know if he loses his leader he more than likely has troops that he cannot how do you say he cannot defend himself with like although he has a leader he's okay but when he loses it he can be rallied out so his play style is ultimately going to be one of you know, he, he goes with assertion, meaning that, you know, if he's going to pour it in, he's probably going to pour it in with five or six or maybe ten tier four players that are all roughly around the same amount of might as, you know, as his, you know, as necessary for filling his rallies. But he's also going to be calculative, and meaning that, you know, the guy that's in the higher tier bracket a lot of the time, he'll go for a fort and he won't fill it up with his leader. Uh, because in his playstyle, he's trying to take over as many forts as he possibly can. So he'll go to Frozen, knock everybody out in Frozen, go to Tempest, knock everybody out in Tempest. He'll just keep bouncing from fort to fort to fort, just killing troops. Because his gear is superior to most players. And so he can just put on a good set of gear, have tier 4s reinforce him, and that's all he does is murder everything in his path. There's absolutely nothing that he won't try to march on. And funny enough, if you put somebody like Damn Too Good, who, again, you know, if you put a guy like this beside that guy, he would march on this guy in a heartbeat. Because, frankly, it's a walk in the park. Now, having that said, you know, I don't know. Those are just play styles that, frankly, I've been picking up on. But they're obviously a difference in both the amount of money versus you know, the amount of uh, time and effort that people have put into them. Uh, but, you know, of course, uh, looks like we have a visitor. <laughs> and, you know, of course, uh, you know, with that further ado, though, uh, as you can tell, I'm slowly draining my resources. In case you're wondering how I'm doing that, I mean, I'm just putting, I mean, like I said, I'm putting a lot of time into research. Um, and like I've been telling you guys, I'm working like crazy to get through the packs. So I'm trying to get all of my pack three monsters to Elder. Uh, so we're, you know, I'm going through those as quick as I possibly can. Um, obviously, I'm going to go through pack 1A really quickly, and I'm just going to make sure that I get to right. 
Uh, because again, Territe is one of the few that you definitely want to grab because of that merging speed. You want to grab that extra 20% because obviously that's going to have its perks. But the moment I've gotten that, I'm going to immediately just turn right back over to pack 3, finish it out, and then just keep on going my way. Now, of course, uh, Anima is eh, kind of useful if you... Um, if you've been noticing how, like, in research, for example, there is actually a cost uh, associated with it, which is anima, surprisingly enough, right? And, uh, yeah, so you, you kind of have to keep up with that, or otherwise you really can't speed through the researches too much if you don't have anima on you. Uh, that is just something to consider. But, needless to say, this is just another update for the day. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time.